Do you feel a certain restlessness in your life? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Henry was raised in a home with a Christian mother and a father who was just beginning his journey. Henry was an only child, so that made him the precious one to both sides of his family. Unfortunately, Henry's mother battled depression, but he had grandmothers and aunts who filled the void in his mother's absence. Henry led a sheltered and innocent life until his sophomore year in high school. That was the year he improved in sports, molded by tough coaches, and developed some anger in the belly. He was transformed into a type A personality, becoming popular for all the wrong reasons, and that shy, innocent child was now the life of the party. Type A personalities are outgoing, ambitious, rigidly organized, highly status conscious, impatient, anxious, proactive, and concerned with time management. That fire continued to the corporate world where Henry became one of the top producers for the company. The fire extended to the relationships he developed with his sons, and though he always went to church, he worshipped material things and recognition. That type A personality carried him until one day his world collapsed. Professionally, he landed on his feet, but personally, he had even more hatred for those whom he perceived had wronged him. One night after many years of living with that hatred, he went to bed, and when he awoke the next morning, something was missing. He had no anger. He had no hatred towards anyone. There is no explanation for the transformation. It just happened because Jesus came calling. In that one evening, patience, understanding, and caring replaced the aggressive nature of his personality. He's no longer able to get angry with anyone, even when he still participates in sports activities. The competitive fire is gone and it's replaced by a desire for fellowship and relationship. Henry said that since that night, he enjoys doing things for people, but he always tries to do it anonymously. He just wants to do it because it's right to do it. And with family and friends, he is once again the quietest person in the room. And then he adds these words to close his transformation story, sort of like going back to that little boy. In today's Gospel reading, Zacchaeus, a chief tax collector, clambers up a sycamore tree to be able to see a passing Jesus. Short of height but wealthy, he was despised and regarded as a traitor by his fellow Jews because he squeezed large commissions and collected money for the colonizing Romans. He was most surprised when Jesus singled him out, called his name, and asked to have dinner with him in his house. Being a wealthy man with an image to keep, it was odd, awkward, and undignified for him to climb a tree just to see Jesus. Jesus saw in him not an unrepentant sinner, but a man who was restless, who had a deep longing in his heart. Touched, Zacchaeus offered half of his property to the poor and paid fourfold those he had extorted money from in restitution for his sins. Zacchaeus originally just wanted to see Jesus from a distance, but having seen him up close, he had a deep transformation. As we marvel at Zacchaeus' conversion, we reflect on how deep our own transformation is. Are we peaceful? or restless as we face the many challenges in our life. St. Augustine's words echo to us today, Our heart is restless until it rests in you. If we have established this relationship with Jesus through our involvement and immersion in our parish and renewal community, through our religiosity and piety, why do we still feel that lack, that emptiness, that longing for something deeper? Perhaps our search for Him has not ended, has not bore fruit, Perhaps we keep missing him as he passes by and we need to climb our own sycamore trees to spot him in the din of a busy world. Jesus also constantly searches for us as we search for him. For didn't he promise today that the Son of Man has come to search out and save what was lost? He also emphasized this on another occasion by saying that only the sick and not the healthy need a doctor. I have come to call not the righteous but sinners in Mark. And still he says that he is the good shepherd who will look for one lost sheep and leave the other 99 behind from Matthew. Jesus seeks our hearts. He wants to dine with us. He wants to feed our soul. But unless we open the mouth of our heart, we will continue to hunger. If there is that constant need to prove ourselves to others, to be controlling and dominating, 
harboring anger and hatred for those who defy us, to constantly want to feed our image and ego with hosannas from others, we will always be famished, empty, and restless. We reach out to a searching God and ask Him for healing today. We also face those we have hurt to seek forgiveness and provide restitution. For only then will the food of Christ truly fill our empty heart and nourish us to spiritual restoration. Only then can we rest with the thought that once we were lost, but now found, and rejoice that we are made whole again. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, I long for you and reach out to you. Hold me, embrace me, and comfort me. Restore me to health of mind and body by feeding my heart with your love. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.